leading doctor now. Going on round four now of the spring gel coat, and I'm now thinking that maybe treating Joko as high build primer is not the best thing in the world. I did not fare the surface out. I applied the glass and there was a, just the same amount of space as what the, the gel coat that's there currently is. And my idea was, well, okay, I'll lay the glass and then apply gel coat directly over the top of that treat it like a high build, build it all up, and then I can go through, sand it, and polish it all back out. It isn't quite acting the same as high build, so we will see how it turns out. We're into warmer weather now, and since we're not faring enough at all on the boat, I figure now is the time to start getting rid of these seams, filling them in, making this boat look like one solid structure instead of these individual uh, Ikea pieces <laughs> that, that it is. Goal today is while I can still wear full Tyvex and all that stuff because it's not too hot, I'm gonna go through and knock the strip down. And what this is gonna end up getting is a little bit of filler in it. That structural putty from Total Boat is gonna go into the actual seam itself. And then on the exterior is getting one layer of 12 ounce double bias just to help prevent that cracking. Any of those gel coat issues that are gonna pop up later on. The tool I'm using, I'm gonna give this guy a shot. It is a 30 millimeter belt sander, so one and three sixteenths of an inch. Just gonna try to get a strip so it just goes over the edge on this side, just enough to get a bite in there with the fiberglass, because I don't want to get it around the edge. I don't want to have to screw with that later on if I can if I can get over the top of these little screw marks that we talked about before and get at least this strip done, maybe the other side and start on the under the bridge deck area. We got that seam there, and then the seam around the beam as well. So, no clue how long this is gonna take me. It may be an all day project, and it may make create quite the mess in here, but I think it's really, really good to get that started. Okay, let's see what kind of damage we can do today. Belt sander did an absolutely awesome job on this. Very, very precise. And I really, really, really wish I realized that two years ago when I was removing all the gel coat from the flanges, it does so much better of a job than what the grinder does with the sander attached to it. And actually the dust collection isn't too bad. It's, I mean, this piece of teak ply sitting next to there is barely dusty. Very, very, very impressed with it. Unfortunately, it's a borrowed tool from Colby to see if it's something we like. So I'm gonna need to purchase one because this is awesome. Should be able to get quite a bit of that done. It's just a little over one inch wide. I'm gonna come back with my little file sander, make it a little bit wider across there, just to be able to get probably one and a quarter inch tape is my goal on that and get that laid up and then we'll, we'll start fairing that in and it's gonna eventually gel coat and it's gonna look like one solid molded piece.
now I do need to go through. You can see a lot of that white gel coat within the lines here. I didn't sand far enough when I was prepping those flanges to get bonded together. I figured at this point what the ideal was is a backfill with a thickened gel coat, make it basically a gel coat paste. Problem is when you start getting into that thickness, you can get a lot of cracks that form from there. So the way that they're doing it in the yard in Vietnam is they're grinding back like what I just did, applying some tape, some fiberglass to it, and then gel coating over the top of that. That's what's preventing cracking that's going to form in there. So we decided to do that same thing, of course. Now what I need to do is go in and surgically remove that gel coat that's actually remaining in there. Otherwise, we're not going to get a good bond when I apply my thickened resin. What I'm doing is using a grout removal piece with the oscillating tool and just grinding that whole surface out. It's worked fairly well. You can kind of see what it's done along here. Made a nice trough to fill in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna add some fiberglass strand to, so it's like 10 millimeters, three eighths of an inch length strands to that total boat mix to give it a little bit more oomph and then just kind of backfill in there and then I'll glass over the top of that. So I got that whole area all of that to do both sides get that all cleaned up and then i can go through and fill the original plan had been to glass and then almost immediately gel coat over the top of it because um, you get the best chemical to chemical bond type of thing problem if you look you can see that on either side so either edge is a little bit proud there, and then there's a big dip in it. That is going to need to be actually fared in then to even that surface out to make it nice flat, um, which means that I need to do that before I end up spraying some new gel coat on it. So I'm gonna have to grind back a bit more of this exposed area here to make sure I get a good place for that to bond to, and then I'll be able to go through and actually do that uh, sometime maybe next week. After Matt had gone through and sanded the seams at the aft end of the boat, realizing the next step he had in mind was to glass and add gel coat right away, he had second thoughts about his first attempts being in literally the most visible areas of the boat. But what is an area practically no one will see? The underside where we had bonded the beam. So switching things up, he went to working on the underside of the boat taking off the gel coat in preparation of adding a layer of fiberglass to the area the next day. Oh, shh. <laughs> <gasps> awesome. Very, very sneaky. Sometimes <laughs> So squeezing in that total boat structural resin and what this does is this actually has milled glass fiberglass fibers in it colloidal silica milled fibers and a few other little little things the name of luigi luigi is busy and he killed him well what it's going to do is give me a nice stiff rigid base for the gel coat that we're going to be applying to these cracks. Mm. Time to get you some just for men. Mm. 
watch you. <laughs> like, you're so about to like get put those in here. And it's filling all of the holes. Oh, no, I'm shadowing them, but from when we drilled in the pieces together, so those are getting filled as well. The methacrylate that we have in here is very high elongation, and I chose it for that. Uh, so it's still a little soft, and I worry about that being a base um, for the gel coat to sit on, will cause the gel coat to crack. So what I did is I gouged that stuff all out, filled that in with the structural resin, which is gonna be, a, I think, a better surface for that. Of course, we are fiberglassing one layer over the top of this to give it a little bit even more stability but I think this is gonna be the best approach to get us something that's gonna be crack free. This way we can sail the boat hard and I don't have to worry about suddenly ending up with little micro cracks. They won't be structural, they won't be anything, but they'd just be a cosmetic crack that I'd have to go back and change, which would drive me absolutely crazy. So we might as well do this right the first time. Say crack again. Crack. Oh my gosh, my arm is exhausted from standing. <laughs> With what I sanded off the gel coat and now what we just added with the fiberglass, we should still be below the surface, the original surface of this gel coat. So the idea is tomorrow I pull this tape off and then I'm probably gonna have to just sand a few little areas and then we should be able to gel coat directly over this and still have enough depth that I'm, I have something to sand back. If you notice, you can see I knocked off the shine around here. So I sanded out to the other edges. So then when I do sand that I can kind of blend it in hopefully. Again, this is theoretical for me because I haven't done it before, so we'll find out how it works. face mask because it is going to get covered. Covering your face mask because it's going to get covered? It is going to get covered, yes. There's going to be overspray going on. If you can't tell from like Matt's uh, sweaty hair, it's a bit warm in here today. 80s. First layer is just going to be kind of a tack. We'll let that start to tack off, so right around 14-15 minutes. Then I'll be able to spray the next coat, which should go on to 5 mils. I've got my little gauge, so we just need it to be there, is what each one's gonna be. So a very, very light coat. And the goal is to get to 25. Probably gonna go just a little bit above that because I'm gonna have to cut quite a bit back to even the surface out. And the fact that I've never done this before, so I'm sure it's not gonna look great. <laughs> so why are we supposed to do it under the boat? Uh huh. See what eight ounces does. Versus the game. Oh. It's under the boat. I Very know. few people will see this, even you. I know. This gun shoots upside down. If we are using this, the 3M gun, you can shoot any direction because it's plus size. Gun out, make adjustments. Thank you. 
Going on round four now of the spraying the gel coat, and I'm now thinking that maybe treating gel coat as high build primer is not the best thing in the world. I did not fare the surface out. We will see how it turns out. Again, very thankful we're starting here. Last coat, so this one gets a surfacing wax, so then it dries and cures to a hard surface. Add some of this into our mix, and we'll get to spraying, and then I can finally clean up everything in the mess that we made, because <laughs> it is It is such a mess. Come on now, mama. don't you hesitate. Got my hand, will we land? I got the champagne. Started sanding just this little section here to get it so it's flush again. This may end up working, I'm not 100% sure yet. What I need to do is I need to wait for my DeWalt sanders. If you remember the last episode, we had some issues with them, so we sent them for warranty. Those are my the two five inch that I have right now, and that's what I have. All my sandpaper for is pretty much five inch. And I'm gonna need to go up to, all the way up to 600 grit on this. So I'm just ignoring it for right now until I'm able to get that or I'll go get some six inch paper and attack it. But quite frankly, there's enough other projects going on and uh, this will allow me to think about this process and figure out if, well, what's gonna be the best solution. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this episode, I think this was wrong. Um, I, I strongly believe that using this as like a high build was not the correct approach at all, but this is how we learn. That's why we're doing it here. In the other areas, I'm going to fair them out like normal, a little bit dished, so I'm able to put in gel coat. For this, I thought this was going to be a good solution because it was going to give me good thickness of gel coat, the proper thickness of gel coat. But I'm, I'm seeing that limitation. Even where I do sand through, there's still some pits in it that are from spraying on that very, very uneven surface and that being teleported uh, through all the finished layers. So again, once I'm sanding it, we'll see what it does, but if not, I'll sand her down and spray again and, and uh, until we get this right. Yeah, I need it. Won't you bend them all?